Working on the old Studebaker today. Finally got my new welding helmet, so that's a good thing. And I was able to do a little welding. Now, this is kind of rough. You can see where that, how that is. I could grind that off smoother, but you know, honestly, I don't think I'm going to bother all that much. So I got this piece made. It's the brow piece. Uh, I got it looking pretty decent. Got my little pieces welded in in case someday I ever want to mount uh, uh, sun visors on there. I can hang them on, on, on this extra gusseting. Everything's pretty solid. Basically made out of four separate pieces. Uh, the end pieces were were kind of like mirror images. I had one to go by, so I mirrored it and made the other one. So I got them pretty close. I think the thing will fit up in there pretty nice. What I'm going to do now is spray the back side of it with some metal etching primer. That's probably all it will ever get, uh, but at least there will be something in there because unbelievably, I mean, well, it is 70 some years old, but that's all rusty up in there, so I got to get rid of all that. The next step is I've been working on, on this brow piece. So I got it tacked together a little bit here. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going go to go to about this area. And then after that, I get back into some more solid metal. Plus, this is getting a little bit tricky because it's got a couple different contours all coming together. So what I'd like to do is avoid that where it, where it starts making that radius. This little bend, I think I can do pretty easy. But this radius here is going to be a pain. So what I'm going to do and what I have been doing is I will cut, I will cut a piece of steel that um, I got to measure it out, but it should be the same on both sides. I'm, I got to measure it up. That side looks wider for some reason, and that don't make no sense. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to measure that out. Figure out how far I want to go. I'm going to make them both the exact same size. So it'll make it a little easier for me when I make two. That way I make one, I make it fit, and it gives me a pattern, although it's reversed, to do the other one. So that's what I'm going to do. Got these pieces. I'm just going to run up to my roller. It's going to give them a, just a small contour. See, now they're curved. They got a little curve to them. It looks like it might be a little more than I need. I'll have to go look. Yeah, it's just a little bit, so I'm going to have to take some of that out, just a little bit of that curve. But it's pretty close. I mean, actually, when I get it down there, it seems pretty good. Now, i got to make these bends like I have here in this. I'm going to bring this down kind of even at the top. Then I'm going to try to make that piece fit over to that radius. That's going to be tricky. All right, so I shaped this piece and I headed straight across. And of course, if I look at the profile, right up towards the end there, there's a curve. See that curve right there? So obviously a piece that's bent straight is not gonna match that curve. So I've been whittling at it and trying to get it right. But I didn't get it right. I wound up trimming it and thinking, well, I can trim it and I can make the bend go around. I, I just, it, I'm, <laughs> I'm at a loss because I just can't seem to get that to bend right. Um, anyway, so I was whittling at it and I got it whittled down a little bit and I really don't think I'm going to be able to do anything with this. So, I'm going to use my second piece that was supposed to be my second part and I'm going to try again. So I'm going to make this profile straight across, only this time, I, I don't know if I forgot or what I was thinking, but I think with this shrinker stretcher, I'll be able to make it go around that curve. So we'll see if that works. Well, looks like I got that pretty much formed up and I'm going to weld it in place, not the whole thing, because I'm going to wind up welding both sides of those seams so I can grind the one side off and have confidence it's not going to break, which it really shouldn't, but the hard part is welding it, not having it all deflect all over. So I got some clamps. You can never have enough of these clamps. Um, <laughs> Connor's got like 15 more clamped over on his charger, but I don't dare pull them off because once you clamp a clamp there, you probably want it's because you want something to stay there. So I don't dare pull his clamps. I'd face a wrath. Anyway, so I think I got this pretty close to what it's got to be. I, so I'm going to do like I did here in the center. I welded the two center pieces together, 
because when I did these, I didn't want anything moving around. I wanted it to stay right where it was. So I'll have to push that down a little bit and put a little tack there. I'll put a couple tacks and then I'll be able to take it off and work on it. I'll work on it to get it so it looks like one nice piece. And I gotta even that up because I don't want to have to make any notchy cuts. So I, I might even round that corner just because, man, that, that'll be a pain. Of course, rounding that corner will keep it from being a problem when I weld that and deflect it more. Yeah, I'll have to see. It'll be a lot of extra work cutting that out as a round. So probably what I'll do is just keep it square and then uh, slowly tack it in place. But of course, I gotta put the inner piece in first before I can weld this piece on. It's, it's a puzzle. And there's no quick way. I mean, this has taken me, I'm honestly, I, I've got, I would wild guess, I bet you I have 10, 12 hours in doing this, just fabricating these pieces and putting it together. Uh, and I'm what, maybe halfway done, probably. But that's that's what it takes. It just takes some time. You can't you can't rush it. You got to just work at it. Okay, I got it all welded up on the back side. Um, I gotta see what the front looks like. Flip it over. I'll probably do a little welding on the front just to make it so it's one piece of metal. So when I grind it off, it comes out nice. No pit marks and stuff. Yeah, it came out pretty good. So, more patchwork. Now I'm on the driver's side, so not what you can see it on the video because my light's a little goofy, but basically there's no metal left here. It's all rotted away. This is the door jam. That's crappy. So I'm going to take this piece right here. It's, I cut it two inches. That's the width here. Plus I added a half an inch and put an L-bend on it, a half inch L-bend in the brake. See, I'm getting her close. Now what I'm going to do is use that shrinker stretcher and tune it in to where hopefully I get it to fit right. Amazing tool. Kind of thinks it was 200 bucks, maybe a little more, 250. I don't know. Comes with the two dies. This one's a Woodward Fab, but I think Eastwood has one too. But this is so cool because I could just stick it in there. I give that a little push, and you can just see it bending it. Now I'm gonna have to probably play with it a little bit, go back and forth to get it right. But I could, I could, look at it, look at it, I already put a big curve in it. I know it's got to go more. I'm going to put a little more on it. And if I goof, I could put the shrinker back in and, and pull it back. So it's, it's really a nice tool. Connor's making noise over there again. So I got it quite a bit closer than the last time. Now I just have to bend it there. Try to get that, you know, to slide up. Looks like I'm, I'm pretty close to my mark there, but I think I'm gonna not be right once I get it bent, but well, let's give it a whirl, see what happens. Getting closer. All right, so. I went a little too far. So far I've got this so it's fitting right up, right up that pretty good, but right here, so really what I should do, I'm gonna have to shrink that now to bring it back. I'll have to put a mark there so I don't lose my place. Right here it says stretcher right on there, so I'm gonna take this off now. Turn a couple of screws, pull it out, that one's out, this one's Going in, tighten up the screws. I put a mark there. This is gonna, um, yeah, shrink. This is gonna shrink this back a little bit. Hopefully, just right. All right, I'm gonna run over and take a look. All right, looks like I'm going back and forth a little bit. So I gotta take this die back out. Good thing it's a kind of a quick change. Now this would be a pain in the neck, but this, this really changes pretty quick. Put the die back in. 
Nice. I gotta give it a little stretch through there. Okay, I'll give that a, I'll give that a try. All right, here we go again. I gotta go a little further. Right there, I gotta shrink that. I gotta bring this so it swings up about a quarter inch. All righty. Go see what that did. Trial and error. All right, so now I gotta stretch this right about there. Very slightly. And I think that's it. Counter's banging over there again. Okay, so. Six tries, I think, back and forth, trial and error. I think that looks pretty good now. Lines right up there. It's something I can press in the fit. Ah, there we go. Now, you can see that gap there. I'm going to have to take away some of that material off there so it goes up flush. Anyway, and this is going to come out. So, all that, all this rotten junk's got to go away. So, I guess I'll make the next piece, which should be in here, this inside piece. You get this there figure out the piece that's got to go up in there.